If the universe is creativity itself, how can we learn from the universe in terms of our own creativity? One of the most powerful forms of creativity is allurement. And this shows up in a spectacular way with the birth of a star. Just imagine if you were a hydrogen atom in a great cloud or a helium atom, one of these two, you're just there in this cloud and suddenly you're drawn towards other atoms. So we, uh, we call this gravitation, but really, even though we know a lot about gravitation, that is just a name for a power of attraction that pervades the universe. If you're a hydrogen atom, you have no understanding as to why you're being attracted. It, you simply are. And by releasing yourself into this attraction, you enter into a process of creativity. You encounter other atoms, you begin to heat up and even see what you thought of as your life break down. The very order of the hydrogen atom and of the helium atom breaks down and they enter into this fiery furnace that gives rise to something new. The fusion interactions at the core of a star. So even though the hydrogen and the helium had no idea what was drawing them, there was an actual meaning to the whole process, the birth of a star. You know, in dynamical systems theory, we talk about the idea of an attractor. So the star, the, the future star, is an attractor operating on the cloud itself. So it is what is drawing the hydrogen and the helium forward. Now, how does that pertain to us? Well, if we can identify those, those ideas or those projects, those visions that attract us deeply, we can also realize as we think about them, we don't exactly know why. We might have ideas, but the very existence of this allurement is something that is primal. It's just in the universe. People are attracted to different things. But this, in, the, in terms of the universe's creativity, this can be seen as, as the future calling to you in the present. This allurement then, it's, it's the only way in which your future creative work can announce itself in the present. So the, in this sense, one's passions, one's allurements have to be considered sacred and they have to be cherished. They have to be protected so that they're not snuffed out. They're not degraded by uh, someone who doesn't understand. They, in fact, they have to be nurtured so they can allow to grow and occupy our life entirely. Because in the pursuit of these allurements, of the deepest allurement that we know, in this pursuit, we are being taken on a trajectory that is leading us right to our creative work, whether it's a symphony, a song, a mathematical theorem, a new educational system. That future work operates in the present, in the allurement we feel at the very core of our existence.